for lunch, let's keep them going with the fresh whole foods. The salads, the wonderful combinations of the leafy greens, the vegetables, the good soups that make them feel so good. See the vibrance, the liveness of the foods, the juice, real, 100% juice, the real thing, water, at least eight glasses of water a day to keep the brain functioning. If the brain is made of 85% water and it's down 2%, the kids can't think, they can't respond properly. Add to this the exercise and you have a bright, lively, energetic, well-behaved child. We all know that children can only perform their best, learn their best and behave their best when they're well nourished. These are the kinds of foods your child should be consuming. Personally, I think I've been able to demand more academically from my students over the last few years than I could when we first opened the school without the nutrition program. I use all of the minutes in the class period for instruction. At Appleton Central, they led the way on more water, healthier food, healthier eating, and then when we put the Johnston Elementary School where there was better eating coupled with exercise, we pretty much approached it from the oldest students and the youngest. Education for Healthy Kids was born out of a concern for uh, the smoking tobacco and uh, those type of issues and so they said if we started early in kindergarten one, two, um, could we make a difference and a change in some of the behaviors for the students. Then the nutrition committee was formed for the district, all the facts and information. We wanted to make sure that at, when we developed a district-wide nutrition policy that it was based on sound principles, that it was based on um, practices, that it was based on research. We also incorporated into the classrooms inf information on wellness, information on nutrition, those types of things so they are blended right into the core curriculums. They love doing lessons like this, they love comparing the cereals that they eat. I have a daughter Courtney who's in kindergarten here. It's a partnership with the school and you reinforce these habits at home, they're being reinforced at school and your child is, is starting from a very early age learning the impacts of this is what it takes to be a healthy kid. We saw our fitness scores skyrocket. Uh, most of our kids even to this day are, are well above the 85th percentile in physical fitness scores which is exceptional. And the enthusiasm that the Appleton Alternative High School staff has for healthier eating enabled us to convince the middle school with the elementary students from Johnson going to Madison that your kids are going to be more alert and your teaching job is going to be a lot easier. We had a couple of initiative goings with the um, natural ovens of Manitowoc and the Education for the Kids program, the changes in the middle school, that we had a lot of things going that were making differences in students' lives. And when the kids actually left elementary and then went to the middle school, they wanted to see a change in that environment. The time had come to take it seriously and to uh, extend respect to the students and to ourselves and, and take some action on good health. It certainly helps our cause in having the students from Johnston coming up because they've been introduced to the topics, really grabs hold with them and it helps them to reinforce some of the things with their classmates, which is coming from their classmates as opposed to coming from me, the principal, or from the other adults in the building or from their parents. I do notice that when I give the instructions in Spanish, they are listening. I have the eye contact. They're paying attention. They look more alert. Uh, the, the nutrition fair that we're doing today was uh, actually done for the first time three years ago. And the concept was to expose students to a number of healthy choices that are available to them right in their community, to reinforce the concept that they have choices they can make. Now that the district has a nutrition policy in place, I think it's become very helpful that the kids that are coming from here are going to East and probably have helped the student body there become more accepting of some of the policies that have gone into place there. When this first came about that we were going to be moving to getting rid of the soda and, and changing our nutrition policy, I was very much against it because I think that at the high school level it's different from the elementary, it's different from the middle because we're trying to prepare students to make good choices for themselves after high school. It's good to have kids starting to eat healthy and stuff and worry more about their nutrition because in the long run that's going to pay off. Obviously you eat healthier your whole life, you'll probably live a lot longer than if you eat junk food the whole time. 
I notice in conference time, a lot of parents will say, you know, that nutrition unit is really making a difference. But I think we are a progressive district, and we've had this nutrition policy developing at some of our elementary and middle level schools, and it didn't really make its way up to the high school until this year. That really came about because of some specific parents that saw a need for us to do something about our nutrition policy. This is the first generation in history that might not outlive their parents because of health and lifestyle issues, nutrition and fitness. If they don't have that, what's their health worth to them? It's a connection that when we started the healthier foods in the alternative high school and we noticed that all of a sudden the attendance rate had gone way up, our dropout rate um, last year, only 16 students dropped out out of 4,500 high school age students. I can't buy the argument that it's too costly for schools to provide good nutrition for their students. I found that one cost will reduce another. I don't have the vandalism. I don't have the litter. I don't have the need for high security. We've cut $5 million out of our operational budget in the last two years. We did 35 focus groups in the community and not one person brought up the issue of you should get back into junk type foods because they see that healthy lifestyles is important. I believe in three or four years every school in the country will be into a nutrition program because the more schools that are going in that direction they're seeing it does make a difference. The parents are happy that we care that much about their children. We've got to stop using our most precious commodity, our kids, to make extra money. Thank you to the schools, staff, and students of the Appleton Area School District. The school lunch program became an act of Congress in 1946. The fresh foods served at the Appleton, Wisconsin Central Alternative School embrace the spirit of the law to provide every nutrient to each student each day. You may duplicate this video or DVD, but only intact and unedited, for showing to help provide nutritious foods to children.